Welcome to the Sun River Angler's Fly Tying Corner for this month. I'm going to tie a Pale Morning Dunn CDC Thorax. This is a really neat pattern for imitating mayflies, in this case a Pale Morning Dunn. Uh, this time of year the Crooked River has great PMD hatches and it's one of my favorite flies for, for fishing during September on the Crooked River. The materials we need for this fly begin with the hook. We're going to use a Daiichi 1180 size 16 to 18. The wing we're going to use CDC in a medium done. For the tail, pale yellow microfibats. The abdomen, I use a pale yellow biot. The thorax is pale yellow superfine dubbing. And a hackle is a whiting dry fly saddle in ginger. So we'll start this fly by tying on right at the two thirds point of the hook. We're going to proportion immediately where the wing is going to set. For the wing, I'm going to use Trout Hunter. CDC, I'm going to choose two of these feathers and pinch them together and gather the fibers together like this to form the wing. And I'll tie those on right at the two-thirds point, right where I set my thread and I'll clip off the excess. CDC just floats really well and it's excellent material for uh, dry flies. So I'm going to build a little bump right in front of that wing to kind of push it upright. And then I'm going to post with a couple of wraps around the wing just to give it some stability and some strength and to set it in place. Got a little straggler, we'll pinch that one out and I'll tie that off. Next I'm going to use microfibats and I'll choose four microfibats for the tail. I'll tie these on right at the uh, back of that little hump and I'll wind all the way back to the tail set position or right above the barb of the hook and I'll come in with uh, uh, a wrap underneath these and then I'm manually going to split this these two fibers apart. And the next step before I tie these to split them permanently is I'm going to spin my bobbin to create a, a rope and I'll bring it right up in between do a lock wrap and then one wrap right underneath to set them in place. And that'll split these uh, fibers, two on either side of the tail. That'll give it plenty of support. The next, I'm going to use a, uh, a feather off of uh, a goose wing, dyed pale yellow. I don't use the biot. I use the opposite side of the feather. And I will... Uh, pick out one fiber, one barb, and tie this on again right back at the tail set position and then wind all the way forward to the uh, to the wing. I take just a little bit of glue and coat the underside and the, uh, the top so it gives some stability to that biot. They break easily and trout teeth. So then I'm going to wind with the opaque side back and the translucent side forward uh, on this biot. You can see the nice segmentation that's beginning to appear on this fly. And I'll wind that all the way up to the wing and then we'll tie it off with a couple of wraps. It's important to make these soft wraps because you can cut that biot in a, in a heartbeat with the uh, thread. As 
So next I'm going to select a hackle and I'm using a whiting dry fly saddle in ginger. And you can see from this one I've got both ginger and brown in this saddle. I'm going to choose a ginger fiber and uh, use a, the lighter shade for this particular pattern. I've prepared it by stripping off a few of the barbs. I'm going to tie that on right at the thorax position and we'll set it aside for now. You'll note I've tied that shiny side back and dull side forward. Before we wind the hackle I've got to tie a thorax and I'm going to use a blend of uh, super fine in pale yellow and you can see the color of this but up top you'll see some sparkly fibers and I've blended about 25 percent UV um, calabatus dubbing into that super fine to make it um, sparkle just subtly. It gives it a little life and a little character. So I'm going to take a, a, a very sparse pinch of this material and I'll tie it on and I'll capture just a few of the fibers. Tie it right in at, at the, uh, the back of the thorax and then I'm going to spin it around the thread and wind it forward over the thorax area and then I'll wind in front of the wing. You can see I can build that up in front of that wing and hold it up nice and tight. So now I can move right into my hackle, winding this right at 90 degrees to the hook shank. I'm going to wind three wraps behind the wing, three wraps in front of the wing, and then I'll bring it up and just cross the thread over the hackle stem to not catch any of the barbs and we'll tie that off with a few wraps of thread and I'll clip the excess. Then I like to pre-glue my thread just a little bit. I can put just a little bit of glue on the thread. When I'm working around the eye, I, I can glue that eye pretty quick, but if I glue my thread, I basically pre-glue it and I avoid that problem. So I'll whip finish right at the eye of the hook and we'll pull that down, not capturing any of the barbs, and I'll clip it off. I've got one barb caught in there, so I clip that out. And you can see as I'll rotate this in the vise what that fly looks like. Now I'm going to take the last part of this thorax pattern and I'm going to clip the underside of the fly just about the length of the bend of the hook. Maybe subtly smaller. What this is going to do is enable this fly to ride very very low on the water surface and uh, really do a good job imitating an emerging mayfly. This is really a, a beautiful pattern to tie and a beautiful pattern to fish with. So that's your Sun River Anglers fly tying corner for this month. I hope you'll give the Pale Morning Dun CDC Thorax a try out on the Crooked River soon. Those hatches should be good on on uh, overcast days, overcast cloudy days, they should come off real well. And this pattern will uh, solve that hatch very effectively. Thanks for watching.